This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Flex 5, part of the IdeaPad line. This is a 14-inch Ultrabook with 360-degree convertible hinges, and the really exciting thing about this is it's quite nice and it's very affordable. It starts at $559, and that's a configuration with a Core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD that you don't want, but we're looking at the Costco edition, and this is like $650 that gets you a Core i5. 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. And again, convertible hinges, and not just that with the touchscreen. It actually, even though they really don't mention it on their website, supports the Lenovo Pen too, which is sold separately. We're going to look at it now. So don't confuse this with the Lenovo Flex 5 5G. That one is $1,700 and has a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor and, well, obviously 5G inside. Very different animal, even though the names are very similar. This one is a classic affordable Ultrabook. Competes with the HP Pavilion X360 14 inch, which costs a little bit more. And you know, we got the pen support going on here. So, this is worth a look. If you want something that feels reasonably classy, it's pretty versatile to use and won't break the bank, right? So, 360 degree hinges, the typical yoga style. As far as I can tell, the lid, which gets quite cold to the touch, is metal. I think the bottom on this is polycarbonate, aka plastic. It has a 14 inch full HD IPS display. It's a glossy display, but not obnoxiously glossy, and touchscreen, obviously. So, you can use it in tent and presentation modes, laptop mode, tablet mode, whatever you want to do with it. Windows 10 on an Intel 10th Gen Core i5 CPU. This is not the high end Ice Lake CPU, this is the one with the G1 graphics, which means Intel UHD graphics, not Iris Plus, which, hey, for this price, that's fair. RAM is soldered on board with this, so you can't upgrade yourself. It is DDR4 3200 megahertz, and we have an M.2 slot for NVMe SSDs. Ours has a 512 gig Western Digital inside that benchmarks quite well. We have Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 here with Bluetooth as well, a white backlit keyboard, the usual Lenovo hit the FN and spacebar to turn that backlighting on, and a precision trackpad. Not bad sounding, right? So what's the catch here? Well, the build quality on it is quite good. It doesn't feel cheap or cheesy. It's not exactly the lightest one on the block. You know, you pay more to get it lighter. So this is 3.3 pounds, which is one and a half kilograms. It's not ungodly heavy, but you know, compared to some that are a sub three pound these days, well. And at the thickest point, it's 20.8 millimeters. So it's slim, but it's not like super skinny. It's okay, again the price. It's fair. We have USB-A ports. We have HDMI on board, a full-size SD card slot. Yay! And a USB-C port. Now, the charger will use that USB-C port, well, when you need to charge it, so you can't use something that's USB-C based and the charger at the same time unless you get a USB-C dock or something to use with it. So for performance, it's a Core i5 Ultrabook again with regular Intel UHD graphics, so not Iris Plus. And uh, performance on this is pretty much average and par for the course among its competitors, which is to say it's fine for everyday productivity work, your streaming video, your occasional casual video editing. I wouldn't use a uh, mid-range Ultrabook for serious video editing many days of the week and that sort of thing. If you're doing some software compiling and code, you know, as a hobby or you're learning in school, it's fine for those things, and yes, it can handle Photoshop as well. Fan on this is not particularly noisy. You will hear it spin up. The cooling on it is adequate enough. I didn't see any alarming core temperatures, everything within normal spec here. So still sounding pretty good. So what's the catch here? The keyboard is very low travel, and this would have nothing to do with the price. And with Lenovo ThinkPads, you know, the keyboards are always awesome, so you might expect the same here. It actually has a nice crisp spring to the keys and a tactile feel, so I didn't type badly on it, but boy, this is a very low travel keyboard. So if you hate those, well, you might not like that. And the display, it's kind of like, you know, it's a budget laptop, so you don't get a great display on this, much like the very lowest end ThinkPads meant for business, you know, the low end configurations only there. Nominally, it's 250 nits, that's what they claim. Happily, ours measured a little brighter at 279 nits. So this is not something for those of you who are going to work in a sunny environment, by the window, outdoors, whatever it is, because between the fact it's glossy and it's not bright, yeah. Color gamut's also not really particularly good on this. No full sRGB coverage on this one, which is what you usually see on $800 and up laptops. This one's about 65-ish percent of sRGB coverage. You can see the metrics on screen now. So, yeah, it's, you look at it and you say, that's not the most colorful display I've ever seen. It's not hideous or something like that. Again, for the price, it's fair, but if you're expecting Technicolor and all of its glory, not so much. 
The speakers, however, are quite good on this. There's two, two watt speakers, and they are up firing grills beside the keyboard left and right sides, and they get pretty loud and they're pretty full. So in that way, for that part of movie watching or whatever you're doing, that's pretty pleasing. And you get the usual Dolby software to go along with it. Two other niceties you might not expect to see in a laptop in this price range is it does have a fingerprint scanner in the keyboard deck, and it has the usual 720p webcam, which is okay, and it has a privacy shutter, so hardware cover that slides over it in case you're feeling a little bit paranoid. So the battery, how about that? Is that going to be a weak point? No, it's not. Now they claim up to 10 hours use on this and manufacturers are optimistic, but they're not wildly off here. It has a 52.5 watt hour battery, which is fine. It's perfectly adequate and average, I would say, for an Ultrabook of this size and class. And it has a 65 watt fast charger included with it too. So in my test, especially because, well, let's face it, this display doesn't get that bright and you're looking at a you know, mid-rangey Core i5 here. Battery life has been about seven to eight hours with the brightness set to 200 nits and doing average productivity and streaming video work. If you are playing games or editing video or something like that, obviously you'll have shorter run times on this. To take off the bottom cover, unscrew the Torx T5 screws. They are all visible and accessible. The ones along the front are a bit shorter, so remember that when you put it back together again. See the ventilation here? As far as I can tell, I think this is polycarbonate. The top feels like metal, it gets nice and cold, but not sure about that one. That's what the underside looks like, shiny. And here are our internals. So here's our battery, 52.5 watt hour. RAM is soldered on board with this, so you can't up upgrade it yourself after the fact. Here's our Weston Digital 512 gig P PCIe NVMe SSD, and it benchmarked pretty fast. And that's the socketed Intel Wi-Fi 6 card, AX201 card with Bluetooth on board. And here's the fan, it's a pretty good size for an Ultrabook. And we've just got some thermal tape over here for likely heat dissipation reasons and so on. So that's uh, that's all you got in the internals. And of course our little ultrabook size heat sink right here for that Intel Core i5. On the speaker modules, they are up facing flanking the keyboard. So this is the underside of those here. And again, pretty good sounding two watt stereo speakers, which with the usual Dolby software for audio. So that's the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14 inch 2 in 1. And you know, for the price, there's a lot to like here. Like I said, I mean, it's hard to fault something that has this good a build quality, 360 degree hinges, a touchscreen, even supports the pen, backlit keyboard, fingerprint scanner, and a decent enough Intel 10th Gen Core i5 inside with an adequate amount of RAM and a good size SSD as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And hey, thumbs up if you like this bit.